Okay guys, today kind of something special. I'm actually at a fire station in Los Angeles, Marina Del Rey, and I'm gonna be able to show you a bit of a tour around the station. And what's unique about this particular fire station is it's the only fire station in LA County that is actually on the water and has a water aspect or it actually has a boat rescue part of the station. So I'm gonna go talk to a friend of mine firefighter Perez and I'm gonna knock on the door here he's gonna give us a little tour around the station and then I think hopefully we're actually gonna get on the fire boat and we're gonna go around the marina and kind of look at what they do on the water hey hey, hey firefighter Josh, how Perez you? how you doing good to see you yeah Come thanks on in. thanks a lot welcome to fire station 110 here in Marina del Rey California oh cool I was just uh, telling folks that hopefully we're gonna get a little tour of the station, see what you guys do here. Yeah, absolutely. And just to kind of learn about how it's so unique being on the water and with the, the boat uh, right. rescue process right. that you guys have. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, come on in. This okay. is the, you, you entered into the captain's office, you know. Um, I'm not sure how much you know about the fire service, but we do 24 hour shifts. So I got here at eight o'clock this morning and I don't get off work until eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So we sleep here, we cook here. Uh, there's nine people assigned to the station. We have an engine, we have a quint, and we have a boat. So there's three uh, people on the assigned to the engine, there's four people assigned to the quint, and there's two people assigned to the boat. A so quint, is that like short for something or is that? Uh, uh... So it's, they used to call it a truck, but because it has a pump, they start calling it quint because quint means five and it does five uh, it has five functions. Gotcha. So with the big ladder, 100 foot ladder, aerial ladder, um, it has a pump uh, that holds 250 gallons. So it has the ability to pump water just like the engine. Okay. Yeah. I'll just get a quick look at this yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Come on down. For sure. So here at uh, LA County Fire, the captain sits in the front. The engineer drives uh, the apparatus and the firefighter is sitting back. And here at 110s, uh, we have a paramedic assessment engine and I'm the paramedic on shift today. So I sit in the back. This is uh, um, the paramedic, I have, I have a monitor. I have everything that I need to run a full code if the patient goes into cardiac arrest, oxygen, everything that uh, any paramedic or ALS unit in LA County has. Okay. Yeah, so anytime we swap um, apparatus or if I go down to the boat, we have to take our safety gear with us because, you know, there's no brakes here. We're out, we're on. So if we're out in the middle of the water, or you're here with me visiting, and we get a call, we have to go. So if you're out there with us, you might see something. Okay. I'll just do a quick scan through these to kind of look yeah. at both these. Help yourself. Open open whatever you want to see. Uh, oh. Be my guest. You can open up any doors. And, okay. Yeah big area for everybody to sit back here right yeah there's um so only one person sits back here and the other person this is called a tiller point okay so that means someone sits up top in the tiller box and they drive the rear rear wheels okay so that's what's interesting about this one is that you have this in the correct. back correct that's that way we can get around you know here in la everything's kind of um close and you know in real close quarters so it's kind of hard to get around sometimes okay so we have to like um have someone uh turn the wheels so we can make turns or back up into you know tight spaces sure. and whatnot okay so okay yeah. and you got a little workout area for you yeah, guys yeah you know what uh yeah this is our workout area it was uh donated to us by the ritz carlton oh, wow. uh, next door which is really nice and um you know we're supposed to exercise in the morning i ran this morning i did a little bit of weights and you know really try to keep uh keep in shape okay great yeah Let's, uh, we'll go to the back side of the station and okay. actually see yeah, the water side of what yeah. you guys do. Absolutely. So this, we have two poles. This from the upstairs where we sleep, we would use the pole to come down to quickly get on the rigs if we had an emergency. And then... Let me check this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so the, your door is just right there. Yeah. Uh, and then this, this one goes down to from the upstairs all the way to the boat room. Gotcha. Yeah, so if the boat gets an emergency, they jump on the pool and they, they can be in the boat room in seconds instead of walking down the uh, stairs. Because sometimes, believe it or not, seconds do count. Absolutely, I've seen it happen, so. Uh, 
we have upstairs is where we sleep. Um, here is where we do some of our training, but we also have a full kitchen and a table. We cook, we cook uh, lunch and dinner here at the station and we take turns uh, on the who is the cook. So it, it works out really well. So we'll go downstairs into the boat room. So here's Fireboat 110. This is our frontline boat. It was put in service in 2005. And this is Fireboat 310. This is our reserve boat. Um, but at any given time, there's enough personnel here. If we had a big enough emergency uh, out here in the marina or out in the bay, we can uh, put both uh, boats in service and, and perform any type of rescue. Um, LAX is only eight miles, probably closer to that as a crow flies. And anytime they have a, an emergency, as the plane's coming in, we get alerted and we come out here and we start to uh, maneuver the boats out to the, to the bay um, just in case, you know, they have to put it down in the water. Wow. Luckily, that, that's never happened, but that's, that's how that works. Some, a few times they've actually had close calls kind of thing? Well, they have like a lot of times like the, um, the landing gear won't, won't deploy or um, what other, Kevin, what other... It, Sometimes flaps don't come flaps down. Flaps don't come down, yeah. So that just means the airplane's landing faster than Bye, Liz. it would be. Um, and sometimes smoke in the cockpits and other things that they have, but we're here, like uh, uh, Jerry was saying, you know, in case there's any emergency off of LAX. And it could be a number of things. So what we say, there's a high potential for different issues around here and a certain a very low frequency. Um, but we still are here. We have f over 5,000 boats in the marina. Uh, right here in Marina del Rey, and we're about 400 liveaboards oh. within Marina del Rey. Huh. We've got a, uh, a lot of sea lions, so that's why you hear this loud noise behind us. It's like the barking of the sea lions. Uh, our Fireboat 110 uh, was built by a company called Quijack up in Seattle, Washington. Um, it's a sister ship to uh, three others. That... Oh, wait, me, let me get in real quick, that sure. way I can see what we're, that way I can show Here's it on friends. video. He's leaving. Fireboat 110 is a twin inboard. We have a twin 450 horsepower Caterpillar motors. And we also have, which is unique for our boat, is a third pump. This is a fire pump. Hmm. Uh, we, of course, fight fire with water, but we pump seawater. So we have an endless supply of water. That pump will pump 2,400 gallons a minute. And what that will do, it sucks seawater off the bottom of the boat and it distributes it through the uh, plumbing on the boat to we have three hydrants. Right here is a hydrant. This is our starboard side hydrant. We have one up front on the bow. And then we have our port side hydrant uh, right here. And they're called oh, hydrants, just gotcha. like they are on land. Hmm. And we also have a monitor on front that's a 1250 gallon per minute monitor as well, which you guys will see in a bit. We also have a foam system on the boat. Um, just like some of the engines carry, this is class B foam. So we can, like a fuel fire where you might need to get foam on the water on the in a compartment to to knock out some of the vapors that's why we have foam on the boat as well mm. our uh, fireboat is about 42 foot length overall it'll do about 25 knots depending on the weather and wind conditions on the water as well we have a 300 gallon fuel tank in here so it gives us a range of about 180 miles out on the water without having to refuel the whole boat's aluminum hull, uh, and we have a lot of extra equipment down here. We have life jackets, uh, breathing apparatus bottles, uh, a hoist lift if we do like uh, Coast Guard operations to have to lift a patient up to a Coast Guard helicopter. Uh, more life jackets. We have a lot of extrication tools down here as well. So this compartment down here is like a storage area. Little cabin space up front here. So this is the cabin space up front? Yeah, we have a, it's not really for sleeping per se, but we do have storage as well uh, we have our uh, pfds as well like extra fenders down here you can kind of see also some of this is the plumbing um, from the fire pump uh, this vertical pipe is where the monitor is up front as well as this vertical pipe over here is for the uh, bow hydrant mm. so we have lots of storage we have extra tools on board uh, fire drill we have uh, extra medical equipment medical supplies uh, we have bow weather gear, 
Uh, warm weather gear, you know, if we ever have patients where we get offshore that are hypothermic, we do have the ability to keep them in here and warm them up. Uh, we try to carry a lot of equipment. Obviously, there's always many unknowns being on the water and, and you know, things we run into we have to fix ourselves. So, so we're just um, pausing our interview real quick because we just uh, found out that the SpaceX is getting ready to launch a, a rocket. Yeah, for the Starlink satellite system okay. from Vandenberg. And uh, it's, what, how many Space miles would that be, we'd say, uh, away from us right now? Probably as a crow flies, probably about 140. Yeah, and so we're, we're sort of counting down to see if we're going to be able to actually see the rocket in the air. So we're kind we of, may, we're, we may not. we're pausing the interview and uh, I'll show you guys if we can see it. This is actually the live shot of, through SpaceX's website. Uh, four minute, 40, four second countdown time to lift off. Clear skies. It's kind of tricky with the sun so high that we might actually actually see anything, but it's kind of cool when you do. We're just getting ready to untie from the dock here, and we're going to get a little tour of the uh, the marina, Marina del Rey, and they're going to talk to me a little bit about you know what they do, what kind of their main calls are here, being a marina fire station. Now watch your phone that it doesn't come out of your pocket, right? I always hold it. Uh, I always hold it. Claire! Gosh, you can really tell how close LAX is by the jet just, that just took off. Yeah. So they're really, really close. You can see if they had an emergency, we can have a, a Captain Sully deal, right? Where they could possibly lay it down here in the marina, just like he did in the Hudson River. Yeah. So it's like they're banking left, heading west. Oh, we got like one minute left, huh? Is it on the thing still? Yeah, one minute, 30 seconds. I know. I'm kind of a geek. <laughs> on the water, of course, everyone knows having electronics is really beneficial, but for us, especially if we have to go to an emergency, we have our nav net, our chart plotter, radar, as well as pedometer. So they're operating in foggy conditions or having to go someplace if there's a fire or medical issue somewhere on the water, so plug in our lat long on the chart plotter and once we get outside the marina we're on our way so you could uh, so you guys don't ever do any kind of patrolling you only go out when you get a call of an emergency situation well we also do training sometimes with different operators and deckhands we'll go out at night or in rough conditions just to get used to uh, conditions where they're not normal like this we don't have a patrol per se but any opportunity to get a chance to uh, go out, go offshore, just so there's familiarization with all the fingers in the marina, um, as well as everyone's comfortable on the water, know what to expect, especially in the winter time when they have really windy conditions. And same for the operators and the deckhands working together. Um, today is obviously really calm, uh, but times when it's like small craft advisory or even gale warning, that's when you kind of really have to get working with each other, training as well. Oh, there it goes, taking off. No, nope. there it goes. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to my other camera real quick to see if I can see anything in the uh, in the air. Oh yeah, you can you can see it on my camera, yeah. Oh I was just going to ask you guys, what's the typical call you would get uh, for the water portion of your job, for the boat stuff? Uh, 
well, we have the potential, the ones we get the most are what's called alert Ws. And that's where uh, some plane typically, you know, taken off or landing to LX will have some issue like flap issues or uh, landing gear issue, maybe smoke in the cabin or loss of pressurization. And that came about um, from Sully Sullenberger when he had this, when he glided his airplane into the Hudson River back in New York. So there weren't any resources responding at that time. So Alert W will get uh, Boat 110, Baywatch Del Rey, Baywatch Redondo, our, our battalion chief on the call. And typically what that'll mean is they'll give us information on our MDC. It'll say airline, airplane, the flight number, uh, and also tell you which one runway they're landing on. So that bit of information kind of gives us a heads up. Like I said, there's a lot of potential here because we cover from all the way up to Zuma, to Ventura County Line, all the way down south towards Palos Verdes, where we run into LA City uh, Fire Department, and out to at least 50 miles or is all our jurisdiction, mm. along obviously with um, the lifeguards as well. And uh, so we could also, uh, you know, boat fire offshore could happen, medical emergency offshore, like fishing boats, personal pleasure craft. Usually we are like, on water in terms of fire suppression. Uh, lifeguards work in the water, do the in-water rescue, but we have a pretty good working relationship with them as well. So, okay. um, but yeah, we, I, I'm sure Jerry might have mentioned we also had issues where like people have jumped off the pier before. Um, usually lifeguards are out, because especially in the summertime, they're patrolling out there or on one of the balls offshore. So they can get there pretty quick and we'll either meet them at their dock or we meet them in our boat and we can jump off, dump off Jerry, our medic, on their boat as well to assist with the patient if needed. Okay, thanks. And we're going to cruise right by the, uh, the lifeguard and the sheriff and the um, Coast Guard. Their facility, we're going, to, we're going to drive right by it. So, see where it says no wake on that wall? Right. So, right on the other side of that wall are the, is the Harbor Master, which is the Sheriff's Department, the Coast Guard, and the lifeguards. And as a matter of fact, here comes oh, the comes. tradition. The tradition's heading out right now. Mm. So they're going to show us how they operate the water pumps and the water, what'd you call them? I guess the cannons or what would you call them? The monitor. The water. Yeah, we're going to deploy the water monitor here. There's sort of a training thing here, which is acting like the buoy would be maybe a boat on fire or whatever. So we want to just show how the pump system works. Well, that joystick there controls the... Controls the monitor, correct. So if you do it, oh, I see. Yeah. Josh can also help the boat operator by using these bow thrusters to the side. Oh, kind of relieves off the. Oh, I see. That's the bow. Yeah. Those are the bow. Yeah, thrusters. these are the bow thrusters. This is called a straight stream. And if I wanted to, I can do a fog to protect us if it was too, if the fire was too hot. Yon kind of protects the boat. Yeah. Kind of like on a garden hose where you turn the little knob and you can get different types of streams. For like uh, regular boaters, what's the biggest piece of advice for safety on for fire prevention? If you could think of just through fires you guys have seen. Uh, so I would say keep an extinguisher on your boat or a couple of extinguishers. Uh, make sure that um, your gas is always turned off if you're going to leave the boat. Make sure uh, the electricity is going to be turned off if you're going to leave the boat for any amount of time. If you're on the boat, that's fine because you're going to be there to, to either smell the something or to notice that there's a sparking outlet and you're able to turn off the breaker. But if you're going to leave it, make sure you turn off uh, the gas and all the electric electrical to the boat 
That way there's uh, uh, nothing to start. Yeah. That's the main thing. You just want to overtax like power strips or anything like that. And like unfortunate fires have happened in the past where they had the maybe lithium batteries uh, caught on fire. That's always a possibility. Just like Jerry said, just make sure you shut off the propane and don't overtax your electrical system. When we, when we return to, to quarters, we always spin around to face out. That way we're already facing out towards the marina if we have to respond quickly to an emergency. Eight feet. Five feet. Well done, you must have practice doing that. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of practice, yeah. Makes it look easy, the docking. So you were just explaining that this is another one of those the pieces of equipment that you have up in the main house, firehouse. Yeah, so this is MDC. Uh, all the pieces of equipment have these on here, the engines, the quint, squads, uh, battalion BC vehicles. What this is, this is where we get our dispatch information. Um, this is a way we can communicate with LA, and LA is a nickname for our dispatch. Besides the, we talk about the blue radio, this is how we also talk to dispatch. Um, but when we get a call, and this example is an alert W, um, I don't know what their specific emergency was, but this will give us all pertinent information. Um, in this case, it was uh, American Airlines flight number four, it was an Airbus A321. And is this, a, this, and this is the flight path, so, it just because I have this, I have a flight aware. Oh yeah. And this also helps to know how far the plane is away from landing. So in this AA American Airlines Flight Four, took off from LAX, the south runway. It looks like it circled over Catalina. I'm not sure what the issue was. It could have been anywhere from the you know, hydraulic to it was pretty benign. They landed and they did a loop back around. You can see them landing at LAX. Mm. And then uh, fortunately for them, they are they took off now, and you can see they are well on their way to JFK. <laughs> So they're making their flight. So at least they had a little bit of excitement while they're on their way. So this is another thing we could use. Like it'll um, give us, oh, here it was, it said right here, air pressurization issue. So it probably started climbing. And you know, they, once you get above 12,000 feet, typically is when you want to be on oxygen or have a pressure. If you lose pressurization, the plane wants to come below 12,000 feet. Um, in this case, it probably had an issue. And so they turned back to solve it because they couldn't fly across country. Uh, at such a low altitude. And then we just monitor the radio as well and listen to, once they land safely, then we get released from our dispatch and mm -hmm. go available. So during that dispatch, you guys would literally have to come onto the boat and wait and make sure it's all cool or? That's typically what we do. Um, like I said, it depends. if the plane's coming from land, I'll just watch, see where it's going. We'll be en route uh, on the NDC, but if it's coming from the water, then we'll start taking off. Mm. But we'll start going out because obviously if there's some issue if the plane lands short of the runway or there's some issue or it might be over the ocean, then we want to be on our way. But our best piece of information is listening to LA City TAC 2. We can hear their crash rigs, their ARF rigs as they're called, mm. talking to each other and see if there's any real issues with the airplane. Mm. So the uh, typical like if you actually do get called out for a boat fire, what would you what would you end up doing? So if, let's say we had a boat fire, not necessarily in the marina because then that's, um, you know, the engine and the quint will be on the call as well as, but uh, another example would be offshore boat fire. You know, the, especially a boat offshore is burning, everyone's gonna jump into the water. So our first issue and priority when we get there is trying to make sure getting everyone out of the water and do a head count to see, you know, make sure, hey, we had five people on the boat five people are accounted for and that's our highest priority. Just like structure firefighting, our life safety is our highest priority. And it would just be the same as a boat fire out on the ocean as well. And then once everyone's accounted for, then tend to them medically and then worry about the boat, putting out the boat fire. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. This was like an incredible learning experience, being able to see sort of the inside of this unique fire department station.
this is a kind of unique part of LA County right here in Maria del Rey. Well, thanks for your time. Awesome. Uh -huh.